Okay. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I wish you blessing, happiness, and joy in this very life, and also in the future journeys of life. Um, the purpose of the coming here is to share um, some of the knowledge I have learned through the long time study of the Buddhist texts and, and experience as a Buddhist in, the, in this world. <clears throat> I feel uh, greatly honored and privileged to be invited to this uh, place to conduct this course. Um, the course is titled Buddhist Ethic in Meditation. Even though uh, we, uh, I use the term Buddhist, actually ethic is ethic. It is for everyone. Like the clothes are for everyone. This is what Buddha said. Ethic and moral these are like the clothes one must and one should put on. They may run out of fashion, depending on the style, depending on the trend, but Morality and ethics never ever run out of the fashion. It will always in season, it will always remain in the fashion. As long as you are a decent and thinking intellectual human being. That is what's said in Buddhist texts. So ethic, even though we use the term Buddhist as an adjective, actually not an really event. Um, I would rather would like to say ethic and spiritual development. <clears throat> These two, ethic and meditations, are interconnected because without a very good, strong foundation of ethic, mind development will not smoothly come up. It will not smoothly happen. In order to have spiritual development, a good, very strong, a stable, resilient mind and spirit, one need to establish oneself in the good foundations of morality. This is a what Buddha said, all went on this session to be so cool. Buddha's teaching is a very unique and wonderful because it is not based on food. It's not based on ritual. It's not based on tradition. It's based on intellectual thinking, intellectual analysis. Buddha himself invited people just come and see. He never forced anyone to be a Buddhist. He just say, just see for yourself. If that's good for you, you just continue practicing it. If it doesn't prove that it can lead to peace and happiness and practicality, then you just ignore it. Buddha has given freedom of inquiry and liberal thinking in matters of spiritual thinking, in matters of all the necessary things associated with human life and human experience. As you will understand, our life in this world is very much short one. We are just living here in this world for a short while. Nobody is going to be here in this world for an indefinite period of time. Because our bodies are made out of the very fragile things, very fragile flesh, bones, and blood, and all the organs inside are not to be replaced with the, those kind of uh, material things such as metal, wools, or ceramic, etc. So we have basically very vulnerable uh, foundation. So the purpose of life is 
to live it to the fullest and to make the virtues of it as much as we can. But in a good way, in a morally responsible way, not in a um, very secular, hedonistic way. We must use it so that it can benefit us, it can benefit others. And this is where the ethics comes up as a rule, as a um, playbook. You have to follow the ethic, ethical rules. This way, you will be a decent person and will never get into trouble because life has a lot of pitfalls and a lot of the obstacles for the ordinary people, for the very famous well-known people, for the rich and people. The rule of life will never discriminate anyone based on money, based on power and social status. If someone, even though he may be a billionaire and millionaire, if he commit some immoral wrong things repeatedly, then he will get very negative consequence, regardless of his social status. That is the way life is. The truth never discriminates anyone. The truth never favors anyone. The truth will take its own course. That's what it means regarding the ethic. Ethic is one of the principles and followed by those people with good will and good spirit and good conscience. And once you understand the ethic from any necessary perspective, secular perspective, religious perspective, then it will be good for all of us, for everyone. Because observing rules, keeping the rules, and doing everything according to the rule can lead to happiness. Now let's start our the ethic and meditation. Can I have you put the thing on? <coughs> Can you put this on here? Chapter around ethics and its definition. I hope you have already run through some of the chapters you have become realize. Okay. <clears throat> and Definition of ethics from a religious perspective. We just need to make a short note. Ethic from a religious perspective. It's just trying to be within the rules described in the main body of moral principles and values as recommended by one's religion. So this means that trying to comply with religious rules according to one's belief. This is very basic. If you stay within the limits of the religious uh, recommendation, religious law, you can be called moral. Sometimes from other person's people, especially those who are not belonging to that faith. It is very difficult to uh, understand this as a moral or immoral, because different religions have different rules. And in Christianity, we have the Ten Commandments. And uh, other religions too, they have their own rules. So it may be a little bit confine. If it comes to the question of compassion and humanity and goodwill. For example, in major religions, even before Buddha's time, sacrifice is recommended. Sacrifice of animal. In such case, 
we will be accepting of from the religious perspective of those people, but from other perspective of compassion and humanitarian goodwill. It may be a little bit difficult to accept as ethical. So <clears throat> when you learn to this uh, paragraph, this paragraph, faith is very important source for the ethic and religious ethics and religious rules become ethical rules and principle. Now, let's run through the definition of ethics from the philosophical perspective. You can read ethics from the philosophical viewpoint. It's defined as a self-co-principle in the of intellectual thinking, which did I might right and wrong, good and bad, regarding decision, choice and action. This includes all the areas of conduct, behavior, mode of interaction, and day to day activities of life. For ethics in this context, intellectual capacity and the ability to discern right and wrong, good and bad ways the central role. This is just only a brief description. This is the more closer and more near to the Buddha's teaching. Because Buddha's teaching is based on analysis. Analysis can happen from unbiased intellectual view and intellectual perspective. <clears throat> In this definition, I think from philosophical perspective, it's more universal because it is based on an analysis, intellectual analysis without any bias, without any uh, faith, but based on goodwill and intelligence. <clears throat> so the best ethical principle can be from goodwill, because this is more profound, more universal. Spiritual values of compassion are universal. Nobody say anything bad about compassion. Only in the case of unlimited, unlimited reckless compassion, which can cause danger. You have to have intellectual compassion. Even though as a saint, you can have unlimited compassion. But when you are living daily life with your own limited resource and your own uh, limitations, you have to have compassion, but in a very intellectual compassion. This is a very much uh, practical. Now let's run through the birds ethic. Here the, I mentioned both ethics and Buddhism is more like secular ethic because it's not source in real faith. But in practical was down. In practical was down. And profound intellectual thinking for the common good of human beings in the real life and for all living beings regardless of religion, race, social status, or any dogmatic ideals. This is just only a brief explanation. You just know the ethic and its definition from a religious perspective, from a secular perspective, from perspective of Buddhist teaching, so you have three kind of perspective to give the definition to the ethic. <clears throat> Once you have these three categories of perspective, you can make a correct note regarding ethic and its definition. Now, let's go ahead to the Next page. Ethic and Buddhist teaching and what it involves. Ethic and Buddhist teaching involves 
The barrier rules and advisory teachings of Buddha is contained in the Vinaya texts and various sutras for both monastic and ordinary lay community. Okay, in Buddhism, I think it can be defined in two categories. One is for the monastic, one is for the lay people, not only for lay people, for everyone. Every human being. For the monastic, it's called the Vinaya Pitkas. Vinaya Pitkas covers five original big body books about the site and uh, together with its commentary and sub-commentaries. For the monks, the rules are 227. For the, for the female big cunies, and 311 rules. But in this course, because we are lay people, I would like to emphasize the ethics for the lay people. Ethics for monastics can be studied in the Winnie Abhijaya text. In Buddhist text, the purpose of ethics are tenfold mission and by the Buddha. But here I only uh, touch on only a few points because it's more uh, relevant for the lay people. <coughs> now, um, the, the purpose of ethic, ethic and ethical principles in Buddhism have two purposes. You, you, you run through this. Uh, and the first is to promote well-being and improve characteristic by virtue of an ordinary human individual. This is the first purpose. To promote well-being and improve the characteristic by virtue of an ordinary human individual. This is the first purpose. It can lead to live life in peace and progress and happiness. Why? Because if we live, if a person can live a moral life, observe moral present, his conscience, his consciousness will be free from any guilt, any remorse. This way, he can have clear conscience. He can have peace of mind and joy for all his life. Always feeling happy for whatever he has done or any amount of time he has lived in his life. So this is the first purpose. The second purpose is to elevate an individual human being to the level of purity of conduct and then leading all the way to the day duty of, of the mind at the highest level. To understand this, I would like to use the, the terms of Sabarisa. Sabarisa means a person who is good not only in his mind, but always also in his conduct. Such kind of person is called a Sabarisa. Sabarisa means a saint. A saint who has a lot of good will and a lot of good conduct. Based on his good will, he always tried to do good deeds, good action. Then he became a very good, saintly person. These are visible benefits in this life. If he practices meditation, he can make good progress because his uh, character and his spirit is pure and empowered more preserves. So with such a person, when he practices meditation, he can be successful. He can make progress in his spiritual pursuits. Regarding this, you can see there, and this can occur when an individual daily studies 
stage of spiritual progress, such as the absorption state, advancement state of pure consciousness, developing of inside knowledge, part of infusion knowledge, the identity of the one place on the journey of spiritual progress. This is the highest benefit. <clears throat> now, another uh, biological positive effect. Even though most people in the West don't live in the next phase of life, probably known as the revolt, if a mortal person dies, he will die a peaceful death without any guilt, remorse. And then he will continue his journey of life to heaven or to which human world, human rebirth, depending on his mental condition. If he has a strong wish to be born in the heaven or to, to be reborn in the human world, he will get a good rebirth. This is another benefit. <clears throat> now, foundation of the at <clears throat> I want to apologize for my hand, and uh, my computer handling is not good. <laughs> so, foundation of the ethic. I hope you have already run through this, these paragraphs. <clears throat> foundation of ethic is actually human mind, and the ability to think result of the one's own action and one's own choice. Regarding this religious belief, more as Conscience, intellectual capacity to reason and logically think both the good and bad result of one's action. The desire to live life and happiness as a good, responsible person without feeling any sort of guilt relating to one's action are some of the basic foundations of ethic and ethical principle. <clears throat> so, foundation of ethic is actually one's own intellect and one's own thinking. This is very basic. Even though it is mentioned in some detail. Now, universal uh, universe golden standard of ethic. Universal golden standard of ethic are usually compassion, humanitarian goodwill, considerate respect for well being of others, human progress, and common good through a wholesome and moral path of making the right choice are the standards by which an ethical principle is formulated and applied. These are very simple and easy to understand. In order to have a good acceptable standard, it's very important to base all the ethical principles on the compassion and goodwill and consideration for well-being of others and progress and common good. These are uh, ethical standards. This may be a little bit different from the religious ethic, pure religious ethic. Pure religious ethic, because it is based on faith, it has to follow the religious text, the religious rules. Now let's go ahead to the rule of ethic. I think we, we, we should engage together the rule of ethic. Uh, if ethic and ethical principles are upheld, it helps us to you can read together, make a better person. Okay, let's read together. If ethic and ethical, if ethic and ethical principles are upheld, it helps us to create a better person in a better society in daily life. B, be more accountable for one's actions. actions. C, be more responsible for persons in the middle of making appropriate choices, decisions, decisions so that we can be positive on others. D, be more considerate towards one's own well-being as well as to others. 
description of the benefit. The benefits are endless because one can experience benefits in this very existence as well as in future countless channel of life. This is the benefit of ethic. <clears throat> can I make a change on your laptop real quick so it doesn't keep turning the screen off? Yeah. It's much better. This one was in the Here, I'll turn it off. Yeah. You, you're going to scroll in? Do what? You want to go to fine? Oh, no, I'm just going to keep the screen from turning off. Okay. Uh, very nice. Half an hour. Never. <laughs> 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 Thank you. <clears throat> Why it is necessary to follow ethic and the principle? Actually, this question is no longer necessary. You want to understand the benefits and the benefits of uh, following ethic, but. Uh, but we, we just need to run through this uh, passage. <clears throat> to understand this, it's necessary to show an analogy of fire. Here I explain using the fire. Every day we use fire in the oven, on the microwave, in the form of electric energy, electricity. But in the earlier day, we used the uh, ordinary fire. When we are using the fire, we have a purpose to go to food, to keep ourselves warm. But one mishandling of the fire can be dangerous. Because fire has destructive power. In the same way, ethic and ethical principles are ways and methods of handling fire. You need to use it because a single mistake can be fatal in the war. For example, those who have done very serious, great mistake, they, can, they have to live that and the repeated incidents of guilt and remorse. Sometimes in the case of some wrong deeds, both the victim and perpetrator have long time negated in past. For example, in the case of the sexual crime committed to someone by some reckless foolish person, it brings a lot of bad consequence to the victim and the perpetrator as well. This is very clear in every news report. That's why ethical principles are compared to the, the fire. We need to handle the fire with the knowledge, cushions. In the same way, we need to do things mindfully and intelligently. This way, the actions will impact in a positive way. It will not impact in a very negative way. <clears throat> now, let's read together. Let's read together to understand the, to understand the why it is necessary to follow ethical principle. 
Okay. Do you understand it? Is it the sincere show of melody or fire? All the ceremonies, why are you going to die? For then it is such a story to you. Give it to yourself now. Give it to all the world you used to do in the day to die. Here the men are going to the proper care of your knowledge. Because it's still on the side of fire. Then God was the first to be done with you. And now, the fire of the man who has grown pretty in the discussion of the power. Similarly, there is a chance to go to and that really has a consequence. I think we have to get this right. Like the words in the press of the family of the triangle of our life. We all need to have a lot of happiness to get the principles of our proper life. We see that we're the right choices. We are making the right decisions. We are doing the right actions. We are dying as well as what has left us to come back to in our lives. We do not match our lives. This is the spot of all of our lives. But as it can be to be wrong, we are not what we need. And I think it is a kind of a principle. I think that what I want to do is to find new values and to be found in our existence. Not all of them need to be. Which clearly distinguishes human beings from those who live in the world. All of us is such a celestial or a capsule of human beings. Put marks to clear distinction between basic and the existence of the animal and the descending the level of the human beings. In terms of having basic being the sense of eating and sleeping and living, all the human beings including children are very much the same. But human beings stand out clearly by having certain goals and principles of moral and ethical conduct to deal with each other. These are not my words. These are just repetition of the words said by Buddha. Buddha has said in one of the discourses, all the world of human creature will begin a mess, a complete mess, where there is no solution. If there is no more conscience of shame, more conscience of fear, these are very distant human qualities which distinguish human beings from animal kingdom and animal world. In the animal world, there is no such moral sense of responsibility, no moral conscience, no moral shame, no moral fear. Therefore, they do not a bad thing. Regarding this, we I can take an example of the a group of authors living in the pond, you still live in the pond. The male author, who is the chief leader of the group, always trying to kill a male offspring. Whenever a female author gave birth to a male, they always kill. They never accept male, existing or male, in the group. So that it can be dominant over all female authors. And also, you can take example of other animals. They do whatever they want. There is no clear moral limit uh, delineation between a mother animal and an offspring animal, especially male. A male animal son who had who was the son of a female had close intimate relationship. They don't have any kind of boundary. 
No more about me. This way, animal war is always a mess up. Human beings are very different because they have clear lines, clear limitations between parents and their children, between friends and friends, between seniors and juniors. Why they can have such kind of distinctive condition? Because of their intelligence. Their intelligence can distinguish the right and wrong, moral and immoral, appropriate and inappropriate. Based on this kind of intellectual thinking and reasoning, Human beings have clear moral boundaries and clear moral limitation. This way, they serve as the highest form of intelligent living beings on this planet. So we have to be proud of our existence as a human being. We have to take pride in our intellectual capacity to distinguish between right and wrong. Now, let's continue. Next please. Okay. And now uh, we have to skip this Buddhist text leading to the ethic because it is a specific subject who you we need to focus more. We need to focus give me more time. So we have to skip um, <clears throat> next next chapter next chapter. Three, chapter three. Free will and moral responsibility. <clears throat> Free will and moral responsibility. Some of you may understand about free will. Those who are quite familiar with the Christian ethic and some Christian concepts. In Buddhist teaching, consciousness or the spiritual energy is a one unique aspect which is available to every living creature with a visible physical form. This is one of the six elements of the universe. There are six elements. Most of some of you may understand about four basic elements. Agri element and watery element, heat and the wind. These are whole basic material elements of the world. All the world and planetary system should compose of these four elements, except in some desired planets, such as in the outer space, there may be some sort of water still not having the air. Not ready yet. There may be no moisture, watery element. Ugly element and heat element is already there. So that's why there is no light form. In this planet, we have all these kind of four elements prevail in the atmosphere. And number five element is a spiritual element. And it's called the consciousness. It's about the air. It's permeates whole, uh, the whole universe. You cannot see it even though you can feel it, like the air. The air, you can feel it. You can see it when the winds are blowing, the trees, the leaves are shaking. But if you cannot feel it in the physical form. So human consciousness 
is very interesting and very wonderful. Even though it has no material form, you can't feel the presence of it. So when people bow and do the war, they have you they have equipped with their this wonderful, unique element called the consciousness or spirit or will. So, free will, in this case, is not for this definition. I just only use the word free will because uh, we need to compare with the, the ideas and other concepts and other, other ideologies and philosophy. So free will is the, and now let's read, read together. Free will is the power of acting without the constraint of necessity or effect. The ability to act on own expression. It simply means the ability to think and to choose and to do whatever one wants voluntarily and independent of others on outside of each other. The belief in free will will assert that human beings are the author of their own acts and reject the idea of human actions are determined by external conditions or fate. Okay, now let's stop here. So, as I have explained already, actually. consciousness or the power of the mind, the power of the will, is very much present in everyone. We always act based on our mental impulse and our desires, our wish, our emotion. <coughs> so everybody is the owner of their own will, the owner of their own mind. They don't need to ask permission. They don't need to think about their superiors, whether they can act or not. They can do. Any human being, any living creatures can move about, can do whatever it wants. Because the will or the spiritual power is the driving force of all the physical activities of a person. So there is not much to talk about the existence of free will. Free will already there. You have free will, everybody has free will. But moral responsibility, moral responsibility is very important. Now let's look together. Moral responsibility is to accept the praise, the and all various positive and negative consequences of one action resulting in the choice when the people are made and when the people done. Those who apply well to the foreigners only call it the case. That's a story, yeah. Much easier now to understand. Moral responsibility is to accept the blame and the blame to, uh, to accept both blame and praise, reward and punishment. Our responsibility is understanding about the consequence of one's action. Everything in person, unless they are unconscious and semi-conscious, understand the consequence of their action. So they always use caution and knowledge before they do. This is very simple to understand. Moral responsibility, you have to have responsibility for your action. I have to take responsibility for my action. This is what more responsibility means. In this case, blame and praise, reward and punishments are only expression. The world used to expect the consequence. Actually, they are the results. In the world, 
according to those teachings. The world is like a very wonderful chamber. Very wonderful chamber. Everything you act always rebounds back. What comes along and what comes back to you. This is what Buddhist text says. There is some sort of energy or whatever we do. We get what we do. We are what our thoughts are. It's very simple. For example, if someone did some very heinous and very grave bad deeds toward someone, he tried to hide his bad action. He is successful in hiding his deed for this very life. He succeeded in hiding and keeping his bad actions concealed. But at the moment of death, and even after his body stopped functioning, in the next phase of the journey of life, the action, the very bad action he commit, always comes back. He has to repay negative consequence of his bad action. He can ask it. He can end this I'm, I'm going to uh, later on, I'm going to explain you about mysterious and very difficult to understand incidents have been during Boris's lifetime. <clears throat> so we have to be responsible. Even though nobody knows our action. We have to try to cultivate good will and do good deeds. This way, we can live life happily and peacefully. This is the purpose of moral responsibility. Now let's read together free will and moral responsibility in Buddhism. Oh, I can see you right now. If you prefer reading together, you can read, or you I just only go, you go through by explaining some aspects. Whatever you like, you, you feel free. Because sometimes I want to keep you active. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> so that's why I, I request you to read through. Then what else you change? I mean, that's not such a self if you look at it, you forget about it. <laughs> now I will, I will read for you. In Bora's teaching, there's no such concept of free will, even though moral responsibility is a necessary virtue of a decent individual human being. Each and every individual human being with a visible body form is basically viewed in the context of body and mind. As such, an individual human being can be summed up in two components, body and mind. There's no robot. There's no Jenny. This is an expression in the, from the level of ultimate truth. Like the way we used to see the water as H2O. You know, we have different levels. This is mountain water, spring water, mineral water, and carbonated water, etc. Human beings are human beings. Regardless of being European or Asian or whatever. They possess only two components, the physical body and the material mind. Don't underestimate yourself. You are the most powerful person in the world because you have the most powerful thing inside you, God and mind or spirit or consciousness. This is very powerful. We will study about it later on, on the Seta of Noyen Gunyana. <clears throat> okay, from this small perspective of salvation, it's easy to understand that one acts based on one's mind, such as thought, desires, 
then those mental conditions are respective of being good or bad mental states. It can be said that almost every action, with some exception in sunny cases, spring forth from the mind. Okay, now let's read together. The body nearly sucks. And it's a physical, physical vehicle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. It's a means of living that's physical, 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 existing physical. in this very life. On the other hand, the mind says it's a quantum first experience, the objective, relative, reality in daily life. This is that being active by the continuous interaction with the outside environment. This is very clear. People do things consciously, mindfully, but in certain cases, for those who are sleepwalking, who are under the spell of a drug, who are in semi conscious states, they also do a lot of things, some minor things, sometimes bad things. The mind and the human beings are very wonderful, mysterious living creatures. When we understand about how wonderful we are, we feel happy. We must appreciate. We must improve it. Okay, now let's meet together our body and mind. This can be explained by use of the energy to drive us to the smell of the shell in the analogy of the car. Right the key to right the to drive and not hurting oneself, but not others too. And then now I just Exceptions are a person who is under the influence of very strong drugs. Strong drugs, he doesn't know what he's doing. He just only uses the body, and even though his spirit is very much a sleeping state, like an ignorant state. In this case, even though spiritual power is ignorant, no intelligence, no intellect, in this case, no reason, no capacity to reason. Capacity to reason already lost. In this case, extreme ignorance. And sometimes some people who are in semi-consciousness, 
they know, I think that they don't know. And like the, in the sea, dream, uh, and the sleep. Such people, they don't know what they are doing. They don't know what they are doing. It's a really strange situation of some uh, people. They have such kind of situation. For example, if someone is uh, sleeping, only he is sleeping, he just uh, put up his hand and his both legs start kicking out, uh, speaking out very loud. Hey, I'm doing, why are you doing this and this? He doesn't understand. But he is doing this every day in a dream. In such a situation also, this happened in the unconscious state. The mind, the normal mind does not play actively in this game. Mm. Like, like the car, like the car, you just stop the engine and you just stop, you will park the car there. But the car automatically go down, go down, go slow, or maybe move up. And such kind of incidents. And very similar to this situation. And in the case of the heavy intoxication, it's also very dangerous. Some people do a lot of bad things when they become intoxicated. They have they lost uh, the capacity to reason. The body is uh, is like the, the moving car without driver. Driver in this case intellect, no intellect. So they do a lot of harm, a lot of bad things to other people. Well, this this probably includes certain reflexes. Certain reflexes, you go to the doctor and he, he hammers on your knee and you, 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 you yeah, jerk your leg. Yeah, this is a thinking I want to jerk my leg. And this, it's a, just kind of reflexive actions are harmless, actually. Uh, then those kind of things. Sometimes some people do sleep walking. Yeah. Why do they sleep walking? They even walk out of the house. Yeah. And they do such and such thing. Yeah. This is very dangerous. PTSD. Yeah. PTSD. You have flashback. Yeah. Post traumatic stress disorder. It's very difficult to treat such kind of condition. The best way for them is just so we uh, let them meditate and develop, make their mind more strong and more develop. It's fascinating to wonder what does determine those actions for people that take the drugs and their mind isn't responsible so it's it's fascinating to wonder how what what is the determining factor of the causes and conditions for what happens for in this case uh, more responsibility for such kind of action what what do you mean so if somebody's on drugs and they and they do something, yeah. it's their mind's not responsible, but what is? Well, in those days, in those days, because the boy is the vehicle of that person, the vehicle of the, still the vehicle of that person. So you have the car, you already stop the car, you just stop the car on the, uh, down the hill, put our property bucket, then it roll, roll down, it hit a child. Uh, who is responsible? Going to reject every point. Right. So this is very complex. Very complex. So, uh, in Buddhist day, it's clearly mentioned about this kind of alcoholic beverage. Alcoholic beverage is very much like a very aggressive blue. In the, in the cow heart, in the cattle pen, there's a big, very aggressive bull. Staying together with other female cars, or other small young male cars. It is a responsibility of capital owner to keep the bull under the leash. If he let loose the bull, he will attack other animal, other cars. So that's why I'm going ask. Uh, not to drink. <coughs> drink itself is harmless. Drink itself is harmless. But once it was in your body, our body system, it caused a lot of problems. So as a real precaution, you have to avoid drinking. This is only in this 
Thank you. Uh, question or here's the question because he's just saying once the person is on drug and doing all those irresponsible things no, and still, during that time who, what is the responsible what 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 makes the mind to make all that decisions under the drug influences well this is a very much deep psychological question actually <laughs> because all human mind is like a Go to the hard days. All our desires, all our strong desires, strong emotions are only inside our mind. In this kind of the desire, even though in very ignorant, intoxicated state, they just play, they just come up and play a role in such kind of action. Let's say heavy to a pattern or the mind have to action. Uh, regarding this, I would like to mention you a there is a incident happened in somewhere in the country. The father used to drink a lot. Uh, when he came back, he, he's very much intoxicated. He doesn't know what he did. So what he did was very terrible. He raped his own daughter mm -hmm. because he doesn't know what he's doing. So in this case, the crime happened and reported to the police. In this case, the alcohol, we cannot say an accused of alcohol. The father committed sexual crime, so he has to face the court. He was born in jail. Such kind of situation happened almost in an everyday basis in the world. A man ignoring and thinking human beings. Would it say it's the subconsciousness that comes out to play? Something. As I will explain to you, only the latent desire mm -hmm. and habitual patterns of action he used to have. <coughs> it just come up. It, it, the mind in this case mm -hmm. is very much under a very heavy clock. You c very heavy clock. You can when you're. when you have. We, Okay, now let's continue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, I, just, I just want to make a comment about what Lisa was saying. Go ahead. Please go ahead. Uh, so, well, I'd say like three things that I, I was just thinking about. So on one hand, like the Buddha said, karma is so complex, you could drive yourself insane trying to figure it out. <laughs> so like, if you take certain substances and those conditions give rise to certain actions, who's to say that exact you know, fusion of all of those different things gave rise to whatever you might do for you, but it still is something that you would do in your karma. You know, like, for example, too, sometimes some people are like lovey drunks and they're really kind. Some people are really aggressive drunks. They ingested those substances, it led to certain actions based off of, you know, who they are and their karma. So it still is then, they're still morally responsible. Otherwise, too, in courts, people would try to use the example all the time, oh, well, I killed someone when I was drunk, so it wasn't me, so I'm not morally obligated to do so. But it also makes me think of a story. There was, I don't know if it was Sari Puta or what monk it was, but he went to a village once. He was helping this uh, young girl, she, uh, kind of, she was interested in the Dharma, he was giving her teachings, but she fell in love with him. So he came one day to go see the family, and she actually drugged him and gave him some sort of like it's psychedelic annoying. substance because she wanted to like see him in a weakened state so she could try to like overcome him but he sat down in meditation so he was in that moment under this psychedelic substance and he sat in meditation and he you know that was his reaction to kind of being in a state where he couldn't have control of himself so i think it's very complex but there are levels of control you could have, probably, depending on who you are and what your karma is. And then the choice to uh, consume the substance, and how much choice is there if there's an addiction, too. So, yeah, there's, it's really complex. <laughs> it's a very complex. Yeah. Very complex. So, uh, like I, the story I mentioned you about the cadet owner, we have to keep a very aggressive ball always under control, mm -hmm. always leash it with the ropes, strong ropes, 
so that he can have cause problems. In the same way, drugs, alcohol, psychedelic drugs, stimulant are not good. No good, even though people want to use it. They are really dangerous. They, they can cause us to use our reason and capacity. So we better keep it in the box, in the bottle, instead of using it. <laughs> So that, that works better than Anand. Yes, Anand. Suran Gama Sutra. Suran Gama. So I would think it, that, that means um, it really depends on our daily practice to a, a certain point that if somehow something happens to us that we lost the control of our main, mind power, then we are still able to keep intact not to commit crime, so that yeah, means... Yeah, this is a good story. Very good story. Very good example. Uh, what Buddha said is that uh, we used to have a lot of action in our mm -hmm. daily life. Some are sp sporadic action. Some are habitual. And habitual action plays more important role in determining the outcome. And sporadic action may have some spontaneous uh, result in certain cases, but habitual actions plays more important role. That's what is described in those days. So we need to have a more positive habitual actions. Okay, now if you uh, have the enough reason, let's continue. Where's words on the important role of the mind? <laughs> an important role of the mind to get together. Okay. Pura had said now all together, we together. Pura <laughs> had said in the first and second verses that these two verses mind receives all things, mind is a teaching all our minds are generated. If we feel the will of our perceptions or acts, suffering a loss, we are not like the wheel that follows the feet of an ox rolling the lake in the heart of the court. Mind precedes all things. Mind is the sheep. All our mind brought. If it was a wholesome mind, a person sees or acts. Happiness follows him like one's own shadow. Okay. <coughs> the past verse explains about bad action and bad mental condition. What I say is very simple and very stuff. Let me cook. But no bring a martyrma. Mano Sita Mano Mia. This is a Pali. Dhamma, all the phenomena, Mano Dhamma, are preceded by the mind and dominated by the mind. Mano Sita, the mind is cheap, Mano Mia, generated based on the mind. All the actions of the living beings are based on the mind. Mana saji paduchi na pasri mo akrodi wa. If a person acts or speaks based on bad mental states, the dawn and dukkha and suffering follows him because of that. Dukkha wa wato pada. Like the living cut, 
the heavy load of uh, all the cargoes and the wheel and follow the feet of the, the ox, the bull the, which is drawing the cart. The bull can escape from the body. And this means that if we speak or do action based on our self industry such as anger, hatred, jealousy, etc. Suffering as a result follows like the heavy violin. We cannot run away. No one can run away from the heavy burden of one's own bad action. It's very simple. And second bar means good deeds, good action. Performed by good mental states. If a person acts or speaks based on good mental states, and happiness and joy follows him, like one's own shadow. The shadow following the person is an analogical statement of the Buddha. Well, sometimes you say very skillful analogies and metaphor in um, a lot of the Buddhist texts. He's a very wonderful uh, speaker. You see a lot of the metaphor and analogy. <clears throat> Happiness always follow us. We cannot be separated from our own shadows. Uh, in the same way, uh, our spirit, when we cultivate into good metagonities such as goodwill, compassion, love, and consideration, respect, etc. We do a lot of good things based on our good ways. You can see this in America and every part of the world. Rural areas, people are really very really nice and doing a lot of good things. They have mind and their spirits are always pure and innocent. And I just only say majority of people are very good people. And they do good things based on their good will. They have a lot of people, refugees and so many good social causes. This good action has, a, has good positive consequence. No one can do what this uh, consequence. Only their good will and good action uh, happen accordingly. When we do something good, happiness and good result will follow us even though we don't want it. When it is time for us to receive good result, our good action will always come. Even though we are ignoring, we are sleeping like a lotto. When you want lotto, uh, even though you don't know you are going to want lotto, you just draw, you are trying your luck. And uh, when it's time for your good action to result, and then you want lotto. In the same way, your good action will always come back in the form of good consequence. Even though you may not know what kind of good you may have done, <clears throat> they are very much uh, simple to understand. These two brothers clearly mention about dominant nature of the human spirit and human consciousness. If you understand this, you will be very much uh, prepared to manage your mind and your mental condition. <clears throat> if we are able to manage our own mental states to improve, to correct, to rectify, and then it would benefit us in many ways. Now, I quote in this paper on Arakita Sutra. It's very wonderful and practical. Uh, discourse of the Buddha. In this uh, Sutta, Buddha uh, compared the mind to the uppermost structure of a house, the roof in this case. This discourse is uh, given to the Anatta Penika, uh, very famous supporter of the Buddha. The guy used to come to the temple <coughs> Two times every day, when Buddha is uh, staying there, 
So whenever he can, we we'll always give the Dhamma talk, a few words of advising, a wise teachings. And one, one more occasion, and we we'll give him this Arakita Sutta. Arakita means unprotected or unguarded. <coughs> now you can uh, read it uh, together so that uh, what Buddha says is very simple and easy to understand. When a householder, the mind is untrained with wisdom and caution, the body actions, the body actions, and the mental states to work on the strain. Just as a house with a heavy roof and a separate the ceilings, the walls, and the floor of the house, where the rain water was leading us to strengthening the whole house. Similarly, the householder, when the mind is restrained, with wisdom and caution, the body of actions, the body of actions, and the mental state still becomes a strain. When householder, the mind is restrained, with wisdom and caution, This discourse is very simple. I find it very useful for you to understand, easily understand the role of ethic and the connection of the ethic with the mind. They are inseparable. When we can manage our mind, our action also become a niche. In one of the discourse, which describes about uh, the natures and the capacity of Buddha, it is mentioned that Sabangkara Kama Nyana Poping Manyana Nupri Buddha. Sabangji Kama Nyana Poping Manyana Nupri Buddha. Sabangno Kama Nyana Poping Manyana Nupri Buddha. I'm just quoting in Pali. Um, and I'm not going to translate for it. The Buddha's action, physical body action, are always preceded by um, intellect mm. and thought. And Buddha's body action are always preceded and always guided by intellect and thought. Buddha's meditation are always guided and manipulated uh, guided by the inter intellect and thoughts. So these are some of the special qualities of the Buddha, and uh, which is recorded in Buddhist text. <coughs> we can also follow this style of the improving our own mind and our own action by carefully managing our mind. Now you are going to uh, read, read one more uh, very important passage of the uh, uh, Buddha, especially regarding the advice to the Buddha, advice to Venerable Buddha, said by Buddha. <coughs> um, okay, now let's read uh, this, this passage. And, uh, these words of the Buddha are 
plays an important role of maintaining the structural integrity of the whole house. In the individual human being too, the mind plays a very crucial role in matters not only of moral or immoral action, but also in daily living experiences. A strong and positive mind being filled with and guided by knowledge and wisdom can enhance the way one lives life. Conversely, a reckless and ignorant mind which lacks wisdom or knowledge can cause suffering and be catastrophic in one's life. This can be shown by the example of a drug addict who came from a background of well-off family who lost the ability to pick off a bad habit of becoming a homeless. Once a person knows lost the ability to manage and control his mind, that person will eventually lose everything in life, such as job, income, position, good health, happiness, family, friends, and dignity. So very simple. I will not need to explain. So, <clears throat> now let's read, uh, continue to read the uh, next paragraph, Moral Responsibility. Moral Responsibility. It's like following the truck in the road, while driving the car, so that one drives and be sure that one driving does not hurt oneself and others. Travel rules, like all the people who are subscribed to the lens, are that you observe by all people, no matter what one is going to be, or if you think about it. Moral responsibility is placed by the growth of all society. Regardless of being religious or not religious, it is important for anyone who has more to reasoning capacity to be morally responsible in the age of our This is in living or in the fine life as a human being. It is this special function that defines human dignity and as a human being. It doesn't change in front of our very own but that of all mind and knowledge in general. Well, the good is to be able to the weak, and by all the results, not by means of fairness and justice. Okay, moral responsibility are the rules which can benefit everyone. They are like the traffic rules. Every car driver, Every motorist has to obey the traffic rules. Otherwise, the place will come in a ticket. In the same way, if we don't follow moral rules, our decency as a human being will be in danger. It will cause a lot of consequences, a lot of negative consequences. So there is not much to explain uh, because it is already clear. If you have questions, please uh, feel free to take down. Now let's go ahead to the chapter 4, Kusla and Akusla. Kusla and Akusla. Um, Kusla and Akusla are very important. Before we uh, start, I want to explain you a little bit. Kusla is very much similar to Pachuk. Akusla is similar to Sin. They do exist independent of anyone's formulation, anyone's uh, creation, like the poison and toxic nature of certain stain, and like the sweet nature of the certain things such as honey. They do exist. Um, <clears throat> no one can formulate this must be honey and sweet, and this must be poisonous. 
they do exist according to the law of the uh, genetic, uh, let's say, uh, according to the law, to the cosmic law. <clears throat> In both states, there are laws. Let, let me explain this some in some detail. Kamani Yama, this is the first law. The second was called Vijani Yama. And the third is called the Chaitanya Yama. And the fourth is called the Utuni Yama. And the fifth is called the Dadamani Yama. There are five cosmic laws. This law are very interesting. Kamani Yama is the law of karma, the law of causative condition. Everything has cause and effect. Nothing can exist independently of the cause. This kind of law is always present in the universe. Even if you go into the desert or into the high seas, into the mountain caves, in the deep forest, this law always present. They will manifest. They will manifest. By this law. Because this is the law. This is called the law of karma. The law of good action and bad action. The law of causative thing. The law of causation. And second is called the Bijaniyama. Bijaniyama means the, call, uh, the law of uh, genetic. The law of the pizza originally means seed. The law of seeds. The law of genetic. If you put uh, the seed on the, on the earth, and depending on the weather and the temperature, and it will spark. Mm -hmm. So you need to ask the, the, the seed to come up quickly. It will take time, you have to be patient, who you are, doing gardening. They will not come up immediately after you plant them. So the Vijani Yama is the law of genetic. Mm -hmm. And Yama is the law of consciousness. The law of consciousness is very, very uh, deep and very mysterious. Uh, Niyama, the law of the the law of the atmospheric condition. Originally, Udu is interpreted as the weather. But in this case, the weather is not enough. It's, uh, it is much more relevant to interpret as the law of atmospheric conditions. Um, the last one is called the law of the, uh, the Maniyama, the law of phenomena. The law of phenomena. All the way these five laws always manifest themselves in the universe. For example, regarding the law of Dharma, uh, Imara's love is always the same, regardless of race, regardless of the social status. You can see it even among the animals. The mother animal are always ready to defend her offspring, even at the risk of her own life, because she has tremendous amount of love and compassion to her children. We cannot play only Asian mother, only European mother, uh, African mother's love is the best. We cannot play, because the mother's love is always the same. In the same way, the saint's compassion is boundless. Christian saint or Buddhist saint or Jewish saint, whatever, regardless of any kind of living, because they develop such infinite compassion and goodwill. So no one can Play supremacy over others. Similarly, the mind of criminal is very much the same. 
regardless of being Asian criminal or European criminal, they were very much the same. Very deceptive, very gunny, um, very crooked, always ready to pretend itself to be innocent, but always doing this very bad thing. The criminal mentality of a human being is always the same. This is the the law of the uh, the law of the uh, consciousness, and um, to explain all these uh, five laws in detail will take a lot of time because it is clearly explained in greater detail in both texts. Here, regarding the sin and the virtue. Every religion is very similar, almost every religion, not all. For example, regarding the sin, killing is not praised as a virtue of one, a virtue of him. Stealing is also the same. Committing adultery, which can break out the family, which can uh, bring a marriage to all. It's not praised as a bachua act. And telling lie is not a bachua thing. Taking alcohol and narcotic drug is not recommended. The thinking by the thinking person. So all these are recognized as bad, as a sin true. Not because of someone commands. This must be a simple act. The action itself is very bad. For example, when someone commits one of these bad things, his mind becomes clouded with uh, some sort of bad thought. This way, leading to more remorse, more bad feeling and more bad mental states. So these kind of bad actions are always bad by this self. Someone has to die, someone's property is law, someone's family broke down, someone is cheated. And so all those involved in this kind of action. always have trouble, always have suffering. In the same way, by your action, such as abstaining from killing, instead comp having compassion and helping someone in trouble, someone in need, speaking a nice word, and offering some sort of help, and telling wonderful Comforting words, etc. Any good action based on goodwill always brings joy to the doer and to the receiver of the action. So, this is how sin and virtues are very much natural. The action themselves are good or bad. The result they also cause. It's also good and bad, depending on the nature of the action. In both death, the sin and virtues are two choices for every person in the world. Once they develop their thinking ability, thinking capacity, reasoning capacity, they can choose between right and wrong. Only the children who are not mature yet need to educate about what is bad and what is good, what is right and what is wrong. This is just only basic explanation regarding sin and virtue. Actually, a lot of things are plain and boosted. Now let's read together Kusla and Akusla so that <coughs> You can proceed. 
Kusala, Baju, and Akusala Sin are two greater terms of moral evaluation. You just need to apply this psychology and general Buddhist practice from our Buddhist community. We are dividing all actions done by people. These terms are used in Buddhist psychology that are very known as Abhidharma. It is the advanced teaching of Jesus, which is one of the three major Buddhists and According to the Buddhist Titika, all actions are categorized into three groups. Kusala, Osa, Abhisala, Abhisala, and Abhisala. Those which are neither Osa nor Abhisala, but neutral in nature. To clarify these three terms, it will be necessary to explain these terms. ทั้งทั้งทั้งทั้งทั้งทั้งทั้งทั้งทั้งทั้งทั้งทั้งทั้งทั้งทั้งทั้งทั้งทั้งทั้งทั้งทั้งทั้งทั้งทั้งทั้
Even though you are a good person, a bad person, the best witness in the world, whose will always present, is your own spirit. It will serve as your own witness. Both in absence and the presence of the people. The best witness is one's own spirit. That's what Buddha said. And the one of those texts. So we know who we are. Even though we were trying to project a wonderful person in measure of ourselves, a bad guy cannot cheat himself. A good guy also no need to project his image. He cannot himself about his own condition, what are good or bad. <clears throat> Now let's continue Akusla. In this case, Akusla is the incarnation of another with another prop, a prefix. It's called A. A is very much similar to English for U N I N U N unbelievable A. N indomitable N. And part of what? A is very much similar to that. And, and <clears throat> so A means not. Kusla means Hosan, not Hosan. It's very mm -hmm. simple. It's not Hosan. How do you say of Kusla? Once you understand this, uh, you may, when you understand, simply can, you can simply note it. Akusla means Hosan, bad, evil, or demeritorious. <clears throat> so now another category, Aja. This word is also a, a combination of the different words A, we, A, K, D, all the five words. From very deep, profound linguistic perspective, is a combination of three words A, we, A, K, D. So, what it means? A, K, D means not declaring, not said. New trend. Something which is not which cannot be said as sin or virtuous. This can be explained. I have explained something about it. In a person in a deep sleep, his mind is inactive. In this deep sleep situation, his mind is called a abjagda. Neither sinful no virtuous. Because the mind is in its pure state. In Buddhist it is called the uh, Bhavanga. Sometimes Bhavanga is the factor of life. Every living being has this kind of mental state. For example, when a person is in deep sleep, deep sleep or when a person is still in mother's world, when a person is in a very unconscious state due to some sort of a very intense uh, pain or under sedation, for example, a person who, have, who got into a very serious accident, he lost his consciousness and in such an unconscious state, the mind is very much innocent, neither sinful nor virtuous. This medicine is called the object. Uh, when a person is also uh, about to die, after his all the body functions fail, the consciousness enters into a sort of the jhana state. Neither sinful nor virtuous. This is uh, the moment of the death. The jhana consciousness arises, and also those uh, who have attained perfect enlightenment. Their mind also enter into a Bhyakta state. Because their mind is pure and they no longer have any kind of emotion. Their action cannot be categorized as simple and virtue, but they don't do any bad thing. All the enlightened saints, their mind states, cannot enter into a states. 
So Abelbetsi is uh, very wide to explain in detail. Unless uh, until you study the uh, wider uh, Abidma text, you will not understand mm. what uh, Abhyagata mind is, what Abhyagata consciousness is. So we but I believe it as it is because uh, this is not relevant to the uh, ethic and uh, ethical principle. So the reason Guzla and Al-Guzla are totally different from sin and Baju in other religion. It's quite dissimilar from the biological concept of sin and Baju. As the concept of sin and Baju is either a violation of commandments or a near display and inherited. This just only brief explanation uh, as a comparative way of uh, explaining. In Baha's teaching, Agusa sin is not something inherited in nature, but something one has acquired through one's own bad action, based on ill will. The natural state of mind is innocent and pure, but it used to transform into body a state of impurity and become polluted by continual incidence of contemporary mental pollutants such as anger, desire, craving, and so on. Both Akusa and Kusla are not created nor formally decreed by an authoritative order of anyone. They do exist in the world of their own accord and take their own course of action in giving relevant results. I hope this is clearly understandable for you. <clears throat> Both Kusa and Akusa and Buddhist are temporary phenomena which is uh, originated in the mind. She was not going to Buddhist state. It's very pure, very pure. Very pure and very innocent. Like the mind of the child, the child. If you look at a baby, a newborn baby, you can see such a innocent facial expression and pure consciousness. But when they grow up, when they grow up, they can be they can be, they start knowing and reacting based on wish and emotion. Later on, they grew, they grew up more mature and that made us say also become more polluted. So uh, this is what Bernstein said. Regarding the basic pure nature of the mind, I would like to quote one important statement said by Buddha. It's very wonderful. I am not quite familiar with the Western mystic teaching, but one of my friends uh, tell me about that. They have some of the similar say in the Western mysticism. And now let me go what they said in Buddhist. Papa Slamita Bekwe Chaita. This story is a role in the Anglo Pratica text. Now let me translate what uh, Buddha said. This consciousness is full of spaghetti. Papasra in this case. Baba Spagel. Sra means eject. The mind can eject Spagel. It has Spagel. And then Chakro. However, that consciousness. I can do Kehi Upakili Sehi by means of temporary pollutants. Upakili Chan. Always contaminated by those temporary pollutants. So to literally translate this statement, what would I say is that this idol, this consciousness is full of sparkle, but it is contaminated by temporary pollutants. So you got to witness the power of your mind. 
the brightness of your mind by yourself where you make considerable amount of progress in your meditation practice. So you start seeing sparkle, sparkles coming out of your inner being, your mind. I have practiced my Buddhist meditation in just a training when I was 18 years of age. At one point, after three weeks of intensive practice, I can see such kind of sparkle. So wonderful. So our body is very much light. It no longer feeling gross physical nature. You no longer feel the touch of the body with the cushion and the floor. You no longer feel the gross physical nature of the body. The body itself becomes very absent and phenomena. The mind becomes very light. You can keep your concentration. You can keep your mind calm. You are able to manage whatever appear, whatever object as you focus. At one point, I notice my throat. Then itching sensation arrived. I just noted the chin, the chin, the chin. I see the sparkle like go there and instantly remove that itching sensation. That itching sensation, oh, go there and understand. This kind of incident happens to me. Why? Consider the number of people who they have the sufficient progress in their practice. Some people they can even see the sparkle of like going out of the body. In those days, it's clearly described about the sixth spectrum of ray, rays, bright light, coming out of, of the Buddha's body, where he attained after enlightenment. He can be in those kind of light. Even when he is performing, uh, performing some work, in case he wants to use it, he can use his mind as an originating source, an originating power. He can emit bright light, bright light. <clears throat> Such kind of supernatural thing may be very difficult to accept from scientific viewpoint, but it, it exists. And the nature of mind, the mind is very powerful. When they are instant, when they are flesh in our skin, they often appear and reappear over great time, through the great time. Uh, Whatever necessary. This is recorded in many points of the Buddhist text, especially regarding the giving instruction to the meditator who are about to make progress in a critical situation. Who are always go there. Sometimes, even though he doesn't go there physically, he just uh, give a distant teaching, uh, like today's teleconferencing and video conferencing. In both times, he doesn't need this kind of action. He can uh, speak and communicate with the, the, the disciple who is necessary. Here's the recording. Not only in two places, in a number of places. <clears throat> she said the Buddha's mental energy. So we, we have this potential. Everybody has this potential. Call the mind, call the spirit. You can only need to train it if you want to see how can it progress. <clears throat> so, Both sin and Baju are totally different. Phenomenal process of Hosanna, Hosanna, and coordinating physical action. In biology, people are not seen like by nature or by birth. But they acquire sin when they commit wrong and more acts. This is very clear. Seriousness of Akusla is rather dependent on the nature of things being done. Both sin and Baju are the product of one's own making, which are surely motivated by one's own mental states. Once you understand that, we know we are the master of our own action. In our teaching, sin is not an either a stigma, but a temporal state, which can be removed, refined, and improved through proper training of both mind and contact. It is an either a challenge for human beings who possess a human spirit, mentality that we can improve in the face of temptation and tribulations and throughout the journey of life. Uh, this is also very simple, 
If you have a question, please feel free to ask. Yeah. Before I see it. Um, your word temporal, do you mean that temporary or temporal as mind? Just a few lines up. We just read that. Let's see. Um, or Tom, you may have read it. Temporal Okay, it, your, your word said temporal. So temporal as opposed to temporary. It, I just wanted to clarify. Yeah, you get the portion of the mind. Which one? Go, go up. Go up. Just two lines. Stop. In Buddhist thing. teaching, sin is not an, exter an eternal no, stigma, sorry. but a temporal stain. Yes, a temporary, temporary, temporary stain. Temporary. Temporary. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yes, not yes. temporal. Yes, okay. temporary stain. Temporary. Thank you. Temporary stay. Which can improve. Mm -hmm. Like an ordinary stay. In ordinary stay, you have to use detergent or some sort of the abrasive mm -hmm. friction. Yeah. When we are polishing our mind, we have to use our own mind. No outside detergent, outside agent. In order to define one's own mind, you have to use your own mind. In this case, no ordinary mind, meditative mind, meditative way, mind. You have to change your mind into meditative mind. For example, when anger arises in your mind, just see it not as robust anger or genius anger. Instead, anger, nameless anger. This is not American anger, not Asian anger, not European anger. Just only mental state. It doesn't have any kind of ID. Any kind of driver license, any kind of passport number, mm -hmm. it just only temporarily <coughs> mental state. You just know that anger is anger, like a temporary stray dog coming into the door of your house. If you are going to accept that stray dog, it will stay with you. If you say, okay, go away, I go with you. Then that dog will turn away. In some way, you neglect that anger. Don't claim it as my anger, as robust anger. This anger belongs to Roda, this anger belongs to Jenny, etc. To just see it as anger, a nameless anger. <coughs> a mental state, you simply let go of it by meditative mind. It's very simple. In this case, you remove anger by using you your meditative, meditative analytical mind. It's very interesting. This is what I said in Bruce Day. In order to purify the mind, you have to use your own mind. No ordinary mind, no other people's mind. <laughs> in this case, the mind, you must transform your mind into meditative mind. Meditation, meditation mood. This way it can handle the anger. Otherwise, you will not be able to remove the anger. So now let's go ahead to the effects of Agusla and Agusla. <clears throat> the title of Agusla and Agusla are actually very wide subject. Very wide subject. They are more associated with the karma. Karma or action. To understand the effects of Agusla and Agusla, you have to see it in daily life. You have to see it in daily life. People who commit bad things, who do a lot of bad things, they receive their results. Some of them in this very life. Some of them in immediate life after this. Some of them in subsequent lives. Some of them in many, many countless lives. Depending on the nature and seriousness of this, uh, bad action they commit. Some people you see in the newspaper, in the TV news announcements, having bad days for their bad actions. Always come back. Bad action always come back. Good action always will come back. But we have some time frame. You have to understand that you have to study that how the law of karma works. 
how it functions, but it's very deep and mysterious. Only the Buddha can completely understand. Other people only understand only in conceptual level, on the knowledge level. It's very deep. <clears throat> so right now let's read together. <clears throat> Let's, let's read together. There is an important change in those facts known as the teaching of karma, which is considered as a law, as a law of karma. Yes, it is so the law of, law of action, action, action and reaction in science. It's about it some, some explanation of inequality, equality among human beings and the rest of the world. It is very much beyond no intellectual capacity of any human being to explain or know why there is a lot of inequality and disparity among human beings. For example, For example some, some are sickly, why some, some are healthy, some are poor, why some are rich, some are intelligent, why some, why some are so witted to or totally dumb, totally dumb. Some, some are beautiful, why some, some are ugly. Some are short while some leave on life, etc. What are we to do with the condition regarding such profound spiritual powers of inequality and some important discourses, such as Suratama Udhima Sutta, Mahatama Udhima Sutta, and Lonakamala Sutta, and other Bhavya Sutta? His teachings and explanations in those sutras clearly point out the important but extremely mysterious links of our present life with the unknown past life. Life, according to Buddha, is just like a friend composed of spiritual and physical elements introducing into the cosmic world of cross and effect, mind and endless time. No one can be punished or be rewarded for no reason. One gets what one does or what one has done in the past. This is how one's actions come back to oneself in the form of consciousness. In a sense, the world is like an echo chamber where your actions always come back to them. We should know what is Kusla and what is our Kusla. What makes correct choices and can do correct decisions accordingly and correctly and wisely. Even if a person had committed an act of Kusla, either intentionally or intentionally, he cannot be a permanent sinner. There are very high sets of immediate causes either to rectify or to overcome the negative effects of others' life. So it's very simple and easy to understand. There is a cosmic web where the cause and effect are always interwoven. When these cause and effect cosmic webs are interwoven, spiritual element especially, and physical element as a vehicle are Tied together, woven together. That's what it means. We cannot cheat and we cannot escape our self, our spirit. But we cannot escape the consequence of our action. Even though we may be successful in hiding our bad action, but we cannot escape from the consequence of our bad action. That's what happened to the Buddha. That's what happened to the even to enlightened saints. Even when they are in become enlightened saints, they have to repay some of the bad action. For example, Pedro Mahamagana, the senior most disciple, who was left hand man, left hand disciple of the Buddha. Mm. He has to pay back his bad action. I hope some of you may heard about this Pinabal Mahamagrana story. He is very well known for his psychic power. Even though he has tremendous amount of psychic power, in his final, final moment, he has to repay the robbers 
gun in a deck hand and kill him violently. Fast attempt to assassinate him. Failed. Second attempt to assassinate him. Failed. Because he knew her of that. Even the fact that he knew her of that, he can't escape. But he decided to accept the bouncing bad action daily to repay back. Mm. So he at the part time, when the bad guys can surround his meditation hut in the forest, he know they are coming. Even before they can he know. Then he accepts it. They try to smash his body to the last bow. He was lying down, almost dead. A poor ordinary person, he was already immediately dead. But for eleven saints like Bani Mahavadana, he just went into very deep meditation state. It's called pain meditation. Observing the pain, very sharp, excruciating pains all over the body. Observe he observed those pain. He turned into the absorption state. He, he remained there without reacting, without even flinching his physical manner. So that the robots make sure that this guy is already dead. If you show him any kind of reaction, they will keep pounding his boy. So he just remained quiet. Then they left. And after he left, he decided to reinforce his body by means of the spiritual power. He got up, and by means of the absorption, a uh, higher absorption state, he just moved back. Uh, he just, let's say in the other world, he just appeared in front of the Buddha. He requests permission to enter into the Pranivana. You can imagine, from scientific viewpoint, from biological viewpoint, from the viewpoint of nature, it's a totally unacceptable, totally unbelievable, very difficult to accept. But, but from the advanced pure consciousness states of the jhana and abhinya, subhanome of all the mind, you, we have to accept. He remained in Buddha's Found in a stable position, and they were said, This is the last time to see you. Just give me some wonderful teaching from you, very short, brief teaching. So I want you to listen. This is the last time I'm going to hear from you. Then, whenever Mahavadana accepted Buddha's request, he paid respect to the Buddha. With the permission of Buddha, he just uh, sit. He just sit on the space, on the sorry, empty space. How many he assume such kind of physical position in the empty space? Very difficult to accept. Only by means of the supernatural power of the mind. He gave the tomato. Even in the front of Buddha, at the end of the tomato, he entered into pranibbana by cremating his body by himself. This kind of cremation process is called the psychokinetic mental energy. Create heat, external heat. It constantly, spontaneously consume the whole physical structure of the body without leaving any trace. Mm. Without leaving any trace. An uh, ordinary guy only see the boil of smoke and fire just come up and then leave in nothing. Mm. In this case, Buddhists have clearly mentioned about it. Like the way you fry on the oven in the ordinary fire with fire, you put in uh, ghee or you put in the butter. And then Extreme heat itself 
for consum or the fine and uh, other uh, green or the butter, mm-hmm. leaving no residue on the surface of the uh, frying pan. Mm-hmm. This is always explained by using this uh, frying pan, the midday fire, or the key, and all the butter go evaporated into the heat by the means of the heat and leaving no trace. In the same way, self cremation by means of psychic power is performed through a birth text by Benedict Hart uh, Margarana uh, Benedict Dabba uh, Benedict Ananda When they cremate animal, the mind itself originated the fire uh, the cause of fire and it burned out everything leaving no trace, no smoke no residue, nothing left. So in this case, Benjamin Muhammad Rana has to repay his bad action. Why he has to repay in one of his past life? He's really a nice guy, a nice son, only son, carrying his mother and father, everything by himself, cooking, Cleaning, preparing, doing daily household, daily doing all the field work. His mother became very sorry for this situation. Sam, I am so sorry to see you doing everything. You need a housewife. You need a house. And uh, the son refused. Mommy, please don't say like this. I can take care of you. I can take care of everything. No, please accept. For the second time, for the third time, he reject. For the third time, he find it difficult. Horror, love him, compassion to his pain. He accepted to get married to one girl. That girl seemed to be a nice girl in the first. But later on, she very much just like heart and loss. So she tried to divide the son and parents. Finally, the son is walking on the field for the whole day. What she did is that she spread, spread all this kind of food and all this kind of thing here and there and created a mess. When the guy came back, who did all this kind of thing? Your father and your mother. I don't do it. Your father and mother. I already mentioned you, your father and mother. I'm very fussy and causing a lot of problems, making life harder and harder for me. I don't want to stay with your parents. Instead, we should leave out. We should leave. We should get out. I want you to divorce me. So, they don't. He became convinced that his parents are to blame. So he decided to kill the parents. In order to do that, he tell his parents and he suddenly part of the, the place and the, and the village. They have relatives, uncles and aunts. They would like to see parents. He said, Mom, my aunts and uncles would like to see you because it's been a long time not to see you. So the parents accepted. Okay, then let's go. And he took the parents on the on the cut. Initially, and they used to pull up the initially, yes. When they are on the way, let's say about a, a very quiet place near the forest, the, the, the guy installed the pull up that. He just pretend that the robbers are surrounding the bullocks and to, to take away everything and make a noise, fake noise. Hey, what are you? What are you doing? What are you going to stop? I'm going to 
um, kill you. She must give whatever you give, uh, whatever you give, etc. Just making such kind of pretty wise. And then the parent tell the, the son, okay, we are now getting old. This doesn't matter for us to die. You just escape. You enjoy our escape. Let us die. And in such a situation, pretending himself to be a robber, find the old stupid bear guy. Keep quiet. I'm going to kill you, say these words, and he keeps being. Very sad story. Because he killed his own parents, he has to repay his bad karma. Even when he began enlightening what we say, and became the uh, second senior most disciple of the Buddha in the last moment, if he chose, he can escape. He escaped. In the first time and second time, they tried to kill, surrounding him, and yelling obscene wars. Hey, we had you are such a powerful man, a powerful disciple of the Buddha Gautama. We heard that you possess uh, psychic power. Now, how can you escape? We have already surrounded you. We are going to kill you. Show your psychic power. Speaking in such kind of threatening words, all the robots surrounded and hitting the wall, hitting the doors. They, they hit the door and they open by force. Nowhere to be found. Don't ever marvel when I'm already escaped. And the first attempt, he used the keyhole. He escaped through the keyhole. And the second attempt, he escaped through the roof. It may be difficult to accept from the scientific natural viewpoint. How can this body can escape? The whole body, how can he bring himself up? No, we cannot think that way. Holy Spirit, hmm. he metronized. Let's say in today's scientific time, he micronized his physical body. Just like this video and just move on. At the moment, at the speed of light, at the speed of sound, just escape. This can be compared to the power of their consciousness and the power of divine being. The power of well being. Even though we have the roofs in the wall, they can see us, they can hear us, mm. they can know our minds. It's very powerful divine beings, powerful deities. They have such ability. They boast that it's clear in the Because their spiritual being, being and their physical beings are totally different from us. Our body is very much an earthly body, very heavy and very gross. The, the body of the divine beings are very much like a, a space. They can move around very light, too light. We cannot mention. In one of the books, there is clearly mentioned about that one divine being coming to the Buddha, pay respect to the Buddha at the night time. His name is so called the Hatka. He just trying to stand in front of the Buddha. His body just sink into the art. For the second time, he make a attempt. Then Buddha said, No, no, you must transform your body into the cross, physical body. In Buddha, it's called Oranika. Oranika means the cross. You have to create your body into the cross, which is get far. Otherwise, you will not be able to stand on the, on the art. Then what you can absorb into, into the art. Like that, we pour the water into the sand, and the water instantly being absorbed. In some way, then, the physical bodies are very light, very subtle. So in this case, in the case of the enlightening, uh, uh, say, who have psychic power, it's only a matter of consciousness. The power is in regards to the power of consciousness. The moment they just want to uh, go somewhere, the body just follow up. With the, with the spirit of mind. The mind is the spirit at the end. And one of the point in this course you will see how speedy the mind is. Okay, now it's already 11. So our course is 11.30. So if you need a break, you, need, you can have a drink. Or if you uh, have a question, just question. If you want to continue the, 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 
The lessons uh, you, we continue characteristic. After a while, we can stop. About 11, let's say 11, 15, we, we stop and we have a free time for question and answer. Okay, let's read together characteristic. We can avoid doing acts of unconsciousness if we can manage our thoughts with the strength and knowledge. We can also do acts of unconsciousness in the same way by using wisdom, knowledge, and precaution. Now let's go ahead with the roots of Akusna. Okay, before we go that, uh, characteristics are not my own writing. They are mission and postcards. Akuslam Sarajadukawi Paga Lakna. This is a very simple word. Mission and Bursday. Regarding the nature of Akusla. Sarajan, it is always together with the play from every perspective. And Dokaru Bhagan, it always have negative consequences. This is the characteristic of Akusla. And now we jam Sukha Upaga Lekna, Kusla. This is the, what is described to you regarding the nature of Kusla. It means that now we jam every ego Kusla is without play. Sukha Upaga Lekna. It has the characteristic of bringing good results. So these are the nature of Kusla and Akusla. Now let's go to the roots of Akusla. In those days, Buddha has pointed out that there are three main roots of all acts of Akusla. Kusla as the source and origin of Akusla. They are Nova, one Nova, Translated as in mind, start as something in the form of greed or desire. Two, Rosa, in the state which is no longer known in business, but which is respond to anger, hatred, and aggression. Three, Moha, which can be translated as intuition, level of knowledge, and wisdom. It is ignorance. Actually, these three are like the main gangsters. Main gangsters. The gangster has its own gang members. To go out the gang members, the gangster commit a crime. In this case, in our mind, we have three major unwholesome bet mental state. The first one is in particular Loba, but in, in English, greed. Desire is okay. Desire is just only translation. Ordinary desire is are very unblessed. Greed or craving, very strong, powerful mental state, which want to perform something 
regardless of whatever condition. This greed, this strong emotion and state is very powerful. So it may be a good bad action. Desire, desire to do something good. Desire to do something harmless is okay. It's just only humble desire. But desire or a wish to commit a crime is not harmless, it's very harmful. So depending on the action, the possible action, we have to view it as the basis of the, uh, our whole something. Number two called the dosa. Dosa means anger. But the original body of dosa means the change in the state. The mind that is change into negative condition. This kind of dosa or abortion is very, have different degrees, body degrees. Sometimes some are very mild. Some are a little bit gaining momentum and suffering. Some are very strong and very dangerous. So depending on the nature of the, uh, that means the aversion state or anger, one commit unwholesome action. Number three more is confusion, uh, lack of knowledge. Like uh, those, those who are under the influence of the alcohol or influence of the drug, or those who are normally ignorant, who never have any kind of sense of right and wrong, morality and immorality, who never care about anything good or bad. Such kind of people, they don't care about that. What's done and morality? They do what they want. Such kind of brute and foolish ignorant people, they have a lot of moha in their mind. All these three are major dominant cause of unwholesome action. Even though there are some supporting, contributing factors. These three causes are mentioned as the chief cause of the unwholesome action. So when the person is trying to uh, progress one's spiritual condition, one must be able to remove all these three Major conditions of the mind. By practicing meditation, by learning wholesome, moral teaching, by broadening one's knowledge, by trying to develop and improve one's self control and mental integrity. Now let's continue the roots of Akus Akusla. Okay, now let's read together. In verse 10, we have pointed out that there are three different roots of all kinds of kusala. Kusala has the source or root of any kusala. They are one alaba, opposite of alaba, translated as a mind, which is opposite of greed. No greed, good will, brothers and generosity. Two, our Vesta, the main street, which is our visit of anger, which is our aversion. Loving kindness, loving kindness, telling them no as Nidra. Three, our Moha, which can be translated as our Vesta Moha. I am the capacity of logical thinking, thinking and reasoning, knowledge and wisdom. So, so these are three mental states. <clears throat> In the case of Aloha, you have a good will, which, uh, which is liberated, liberate, especially not confined, in the form of me and my, for I better give it. I better give it. I don't share it. So, such as miserable mental state, stinginess, 
Snitching is the best of what one has, what one possesses. Those who are very stingy, who are not generous, they are not ready to help other people. They are not ready to share with other people. Our life is a very broader mental state. It cannot be translated as one word as generosity, but it's the one what is the quality of who's our mind. It's a gracious quality of the mind. Gracious spirit, which is characterized by generosity and broadness and oneness of all living beings together without any discrimination. This way, one sees everyone as the one and the family, the oneness and togetherness. This way one can share and one can help other people in need and trouble. This aroma is very broad spirit. It's very difficult to translate into English by using one example. So others are is much more easier because it's the opposite of anger. It is a goodwill and love. Loving goodwill. In this case, the body is called Mita. Regarding Mita and Adosa, we can compare it to the mother's goodwill. The mother's goodwill always wish well for the children. The person who had a lot of adosa or meta has a good wish for all people. They do not wish any harm to anyone. So adosa is loving goodwill. Amora is wisdom. With the reasoning power, the thinking capacity, the ability to understand right and wrong. Regardless of one's religious belief, if a person has a lot of these three wonderful mental qualities, he can always do good deeds, meritorious deeds. This is very simple. Kusla and Akusla, same and Bachus, are not made for a Buddhist person alone. They are for the whole world. They are universal spiritual values. Once you understand that, Kusla and Akusla will be viewed as universal spiritual values. If we can hold this view and these spiritual values, we can improve our action. We can promote more virtuous deeds. Okay, now let's uh, have a break because it's already 11.15. Huh? Uh, I want to have a question. Did uh, I you, you can have uh, some sort of uh, assignment. Okay, now a question. You can ask question before you have a break. If you have a question, please feel free. No question? No, please come out. Please come out. <laughs> Should I ask questions such as disbelief, disbelief in Buddha is a simple thing or not? <laughs> because uh, this is a comparative study. Why is karma kind of so, um, why isn't it instantaneous? Why, why is it so far out? Like what goes on, you can, just as an example of when you, you see somebody doing evil, why does it just come back on them 
immediately. Why is, like you said earlier, it can just happen lifetimes from now. You know, lifetimes and lifetimes from now, I'm going to suffer something that I did 500 years ago, 10 lifetimes ago. And you see that especially now, I think when I watch politics, you know, I see politics all the time, I like just what's going on in the world. Why isn't this instantaneous? Well, this <laughs> depends on the nature of the thing, contributing, supporting factors to bring in the results immediately or the much later on. Regarding this, we need to understand about the time frame, certain time frame, certain periods of the seeds. Seeds become sprout after a certain time. Germination is not immediate. But the sun seeds, the moment they are in contact with the water and they sprout. Uh, also, we are using uh, one analogy regarding good and bad action. Regarding good action, we are using the metaphor of the milk. Out of milk, we can get the butter, we can get ghee, we can get cheese, we can get yogurt. When we make from the cow's udders, it just comes out as the liquids, white liquids. Well, if we want to make into butter or ghee or cheese, we have to wait a certain amount of time, a specific amount of time, and also we have to make specific amount of effort, such as churning continuously, using certain necessary equipment. We have to wait and wait until we start seeing the flame, so better or ghee start coming up after a, after a while. In the same way, when we are doing something good, such as doing charitable deed, giving to the needy people, poor people, beggars, etc., for religious cause, etc., we cannot get an immediate result. What we get is a, just a certificate of recognition or acknowledgement, etc., and some sort of praise in the newspaper column, and some sort of respect and influence in the society. And, uh, this is only some result. But later on, depending on our action, when we do business in, the, in this life or later on our future reward, we become more successful, you know, or we become more prosperous, etc. Our actions come up later on, our charitable deeds. So it takes a certain amount of time, depending on the nature and seriousness, gravity of the deed. Uh, in this case, one particular example is uh, cited uh, as those who come out of the seven days uh, cessation process for the enlightened saints. In Borasta and the, the enlightened saints, they have the ability to enter into the place for at least one week. During the, the time, they remain uh, cut off from the outside interaction, outside war. Their mind is only in place. And even body function are stopped during that time. When they come out of the state, their skin complexion and the face on their elbow, etc., are bright, pink color, because the blood inside the body is so pure, and the mind is so pure. As a result of the pure mind, the blood becomes also very pure, and the skin color also, skin complexion also becomes radiant. And when such people come out, uh, out of the temple, in order to go on arms hall for their daily food, if some of us uh, arms do those kind of enlightenment say, they get immediate results. This is one example. Because the, the, the same 
coming out of the totally pure state. Uh, so uh, he is, a, it is like a very strong part time swirl. The body makes a good strong power of the body makes. You plant the seed of the charity, instantly you get results. You get results in getting rewards from the king and getting uh, some unbelievable uh, wealth such as gold, nature, etc. Uh, in the in those days, it is going about such a city. Eh? Uh, also, regarding the bad action, the bad action would have used the, the metaphor of the hot amber. Hot amber got out of the thick layer of the ash. Someone see the ash. Oh, there's no fire. There's no harm. So he just go there, he just stand. At first, his feet cannot feel the heat. But later on, the feet, the heat come up. And it can burn his feet. Slowly. In the same way, some of bad deeds don't give the immediate results. They take time. Uh, as an example of the Buddha's brother, I know Divadatta. Divadatta, he did uh, bad things to the Buddha. He tried to assassinate Buddha uh, using, the, using the sniper, and using the well at fan, and using the hauling down the big Buddha from the higher mountain slopes all the way down towards where Buddha is staying. But all those attempts failed. He never had bad consequences, but the bad result he gave is he, his support was discontinued by the king. So he, he suffered, he no longer get the support of the king. And later on, at his final moment, he became remorseful and he went to come to the Buddha and offer his apologies. So he tried to come to the Buddha, face to face with the Buddha. When the news uh, uh, about his coming to the Buddha, heard by the people, the monk, they reported to the Buddha. The Buddha said, no, no, in no way. No way he will not see me in this life, face to face. Even though he tried his best. What Buddha said is true. He came to the Buddha at the entrance of the, uh, the Chidarma temple, <coughs> Chidarma temple, he stopped because he went to wash his feet, he went to clean up himself in a small pond located near the entrance of the monastery. And then his follower dropped down him. The moment he touched his feet, the art began to crack. Big crack appeared, and he, his feet was slowly sucked into the crack, and he hit the whole door and was went down into the crack, and the art swallowed him, and he, in this way he fell down into the hell. So such kind of stuff is recorded in Buddhist days, even though from Burani Bhubai, such kind of things are difficult to accept, such as the hell down below under the art, underneath the art, the existence of the up in the sky. Such kind of things are metaphysical. Uh, there, there is no physical reality to prove from a scientific viewpoint. But uh, almost uh, our, our, our religion, they talk about heaven, hell, etc. In Buddhism also, it's talk about heaven and hell, but it's quite different. Mm. What is the heaven and Buddhism is different from other heaven and hell. <laughs> so, it's very interesting. In this case of the Divada, it takes time. So that's why in Buddhist when it is mentioned about the category of the karma, it is mentioned at data damika, samprajika, aprajika, ahosika, four category of karma. Data damika, immediate karma. This will result in immediate life, this very life. This is a very strong, very bad action. The receiver of the bad action is also very, very, very holy saying, maybe one's own mother and father who has been very kind and very generous to one's own children. 
And then the, the chair commits a petri side, father kia on some father, kia on some father. This kind of thing is very, actually is very great, very serious. Killing of the cell is very serious. Um, so there is such kind of bad action, it comes up in this very life. And uh, good thing also offering charity to the say, the holy, the most holy say, always come back. This is immediate, visible in this very life. Some karma is immediate life, after this life. Some karma give result in the next phase of revival. Aparabhiya, this is the dark category. Some action, some karma give result in subsequent lives. A horsey karma. This karma is empty karma. Empty karma means it never yields any reason. It never yields any reason. Regarding this, it is compared to, it's used in the metaphor as a flower or the seed, which is not successful, which is not fertile. The flower, some of the flower, they don't bear the fruit. This is called the father and flower. And some of the seeds are also the barren uh, fruit. They don't sprout. Uh, to what kind of people this kind of horse karma happen? It's a very interesting question. Only to the enlightened say, once a person becomes enlightened say, even if he do a lot of good things to other people, charity well then, no well then, his actions no longer yield any result. So this is called the Ahasi Karma, altogether three, poor karma. But I know many we ordinary people, ordinary wild, wild guys, we have only these three karma. So, no question? Now let's conclude. Huh? Yeah, I think in the paragraph of the uh, effects of Kusala uh, and Kusala, then at the end it says um, the, uh, the sin cannot be permanent because there are various steps of uh, remedial procedures. What are those remedial procedures? Remedial procedures are improving one's own karma. Plus, you have to train your mind. For example, let's see. A person has done some very, very bad mistake when he was a youthful. Because of his youthful indiscretion, he did not something bad. And that kind of bad action always keep coming back to his mind as a flashback. And more guilt and more remorse created. In this case, he has to ignore. In Buddhist text, handling of the bad action is very delicate. It mentioned as the koko cha. Koko cha means feeling remorseful and regret. And when a person has this kind of koko cha mental states in one's mind, one need to remove those kind of koko cha by developing a very strong, wholesome mental energy. Very wholesome mental energy. Okay, that's already done. There's no way to undo this. So just forget about it. I, from now on, I must make a commitment, a plan of resolve, not to repeat such kind of action, and not to think about this. And slowly he get over with it, overcome it, by mindfully meditating, this kind of, the, even if that the kind of flashback will come back, just watch it, just let go. Because it's no use for him. So he just overcome it. This way slowly he will use his remedial effort to overcome that remorseful thoughts. Because uh, remorse is a unwholesome mental state, which has to be removed, which has to overcome. So if an incident that you commit you in, in violation of the code conduct, at that moment, you didn't want to confess. You don't. You, you don't want to repent. Mm -hmm. So that karma will go on and on until sometime when it's ripened, then it will come back to you. Yes. If if you do, then 
if you do repent and you confess and you want to make a, make good in the future, then that will subsidize. Subsidize, not only really subsidize. It le, it can lessen yes. the effect of. In this case, Bodhi very skillfully used the uh, the tank and the pond. The tank and the pond. This is a small cup. Mm -hmm. You have the drinking water here. And the body of the water is very small. Someone put heavy amount of salt into it. Mm -hmm. The water became undrinkable. Then a big vessel. Mm -hmm. You put the drinking water, very more clear, more spring water, full of mineral and rich. And someone put some considerable amount of water. So, it doesn't affect because the volume of the water is much bigger than the normal salt. But in case someone put some almost equal amount of salt into the best finish, that water is finished. No more drinkable. So, regarding this, Buddha used the, the term Bhavita Chitto Bhavita Pano. These are two important words. Bhavita means develop. Chitta means the mind. Bhavita means develop. Pino means the worst end. Poor person whose mind is absolutely totally developed, whose wisdom is totally developed. For such a person, the effect of the unwholesome things are more reduced and more lessened. It's very clear. It's very delicate point. But the one that usually he killed his parents in the past life, he was still got killed in the, when he was a second, he was enlightened. Yeah. That one that cannot be wiped out. Yeah, well, they cannot write off. They cannot write off. There's, no one has the power to write off the person's bad deeds. Uh, in the case of the Venerable Mahamagulana, actually he, he know his karma is coming mm -hmm. back. He know because he checked himself. His karma, evil karma is coming back to him. Then he decided, okay, let it come. He just decided to accept it. So that evil karma was not lessened. No, actually, he can't escape. He, could. he can't escape. He can't escape. He had uh, some reduced amount of uh, consequence. Even though he has uh, gone down to the hell for his evil action, for killing his own being and many countless lives, but in the last life, as a Mahamogran, as a disciple of the Buddha, he still had a lot of good uh, blessing, a lot of privilege, and a lot of wholesome consequence. Only in the last moment he get did this kind of evil action. Mm. Okay, so very difficult, actually very difficult to understand. This is called a very mysterious, complex functioning of karma. <laughs> very difficult to understand, to be known by ordinary people except by the perfectly enlightened Buddha. Okay, now let's conclude. There are five great uh, um, Commas, right? Like uh, five commas, um, something like uh, patricide, yeah. patricide, and, uh, shedding the blood of the Buddha, yeah. and schism among the Sangha, yeah. and some of those five, including this one. So they are more, um, more, more serious. Powerful, more mm -hmm. serious commas. Five great, five great Syria The Nirvana is mentioned about five great Syria and Hosan action. Kira was on father, Kira was on mother, father, and Kira was on, I literally say, and shedding the blood on the physical body of the Buddha, and causing schism among the monastic community. <laughs> These are five great consequences which no one can write off. <laughs> one of the challenges I see today, though, is um, some folks they need the kind of they need to know about consequences for their actions, right? But others are like they are they feel so guilty all the time, you know, and they don't want to let go of that unwholesome guilt, right? Yeah. So these are very pitiful people, actually. Yeah. 
if I may have to meet such kind of people, I will encourage them to do some good social work and to do some mental training, to choose once or remaining lifetime in a very positive way instead of dwelling on the past. Because the past is already past. We cannot do anything, we cannot undo anything. What the past already done, finish. They don't feel worthy. A lot of people don't feel worthy to, yeah. Very pitiful people. Yeah. They need a lot of the help. Okay, no question?